Good evening, friends. Today, this evening, I would like to do a little story for you. Read a little story for you for Halloween. Let's have some Halloween fun. Why not? It's coming up, so... There's an old, old story it's been told different ways many times and different I suppose d depends on where you live and all that stuff you know but and today I don't know I got to thinking about something made me think about it and I thought about my sister she used to tell me this story my sister was something else and when I was little growing up she used to tell me this story of the way I heard it was Red eyes and bloody bones. Now, the closest story I found so far by searching Google is raw head and bloody bones. Now, maybe it's the same, but um, I don't know. So, I thought maybe, you know, I might read this one. And just, um, of course, it's not, it's probably not for the little ones. No, no, I would say not for the little ones. It's just some fun for us grown-ups. Anybody that likes Halloween, some of us love Halloween. Some of us, you know, don't care for it. Uh, I always thought of it as a fun time, you know, just for fun. I never got into the evil part stuff and all you know stuff like that i mean even horror movies don't even scare me i i watch them i love a good horror movie but they don't uh they don't have uh any, really any effect on me i uh, actually don't have any effect on me at all um i hope nothing goes on happens while i'm i do this in my chromebook so you know I'm limited to what I can do about any editing. <laughs> so, you know, I'm supposed to edit on this. I'm reading a scary story anyway. So, I got... I got it here. Now, this is from... Um, I Horror. And... Here is the, uh, more or less the um, disclaimer, whatever. It says writer's note. We here at iHorror are big predominance of responsible parenting. Some of the stories in the series may be too much for your little ones. Please read ahead and decide if your kids can handle the story. If not, find another story for tonight or simply come back to see us tomorrow. In other words, don't blame me if your kids for blame me for your kids' nightmares. Ooh. So you know, y'all decide. You know, you're the parents, y'all decide whether you want them to hear this one or whatever. Um So this one has been retold different times. I mean, it's not a really long story, but I know it was scary as hell when I was a kid. <laughs> and my sister I used to also t tell me that, uh, you know, about on Halloween, she would always like to tell me about witches and stuff like that. She was something else, but she was fun. My mom was fun. Of course, you know, <laughs> she had to take, she, she took me out trick-or-treating when I was uh, small. But my mother sometimes would go too, and when she did, she'd always dress up. I mean, we, we had fun on Halloween. We did. So, and I don't discriminate against Halloween as long as it's not worshiping the devil and stuff like that because I'm a Christian and I don't believe in that stuff. So, but I, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm, um, different than some people. I don't take any of it serious. <laughs> I mean, I hope any of y'all don't take it serious either, too. You know, because 
uh, you know, we're supposed to have Bigfoot here in Arkansas, and we're supposed to have, um, well, Bigfoot is supposed to have originated from Arkansas. So that's the way I hear it anyway. I don't know. And, uh, you know, different things like that. We've got the light here where you can go and park your car and um, just, just park your car, turn your lights off, and... We went, we went one time, a long time ago, back in the 80s. I went with some friends. And uh, you park your car, and you just turn your lights out, and you just sit there and watch. And then you will slowly, a light will start shining. It gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, and it comes closer and closer to you. And it just starts doing like this. It waves. I should have my little lantern over here. It waves. Okay. Gotta make this realistic, y'all. It's like a lantern. It's from an old train. And the conductor, he's doing this. And you can see it, too. A lot, of, a lot of them says uh, it's uh, swamp, swamp gas, swamp gas that makes that happen. I don't know. But anyway, it was fun. It was, it was pretty darn scary, too. So I <laughs> don't know. We had fun doing it, uh, going there and seeing that. I mean, it was spooky. Back when, uh, you know, I got spooked. I just don't get any spooked. <laughs> I don't know. It just movies never affected me. The only there's only one movie that affects me. Uh, well, it don't affect me, <clears throat> but there's only one movie, horror movie, that will creep me out. It it creeps me out, and it's um. Oh, well, now I can't think of the name of it. Is my, ta my tag still on my cap? Oh my gosh, I ain't even took it off yet. I can't think of it. Oh well, I can't think of it. I am, <coughs> I'm at a blank here. Well. I shouldn't even brought that subject up. But it's the only one that creeps me out. And, uh, you know, I, I've watched it at once, and it's supposed to be like the devil. And so I don't care for that kind of movie. Mm -mm. I just don't care for it. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Uh, there's an, I won't watch Exorcist, uh, that type of thing. I have because, you know, get usually got to see it once, right? If you like horror movies, you want to see what it's about. And I watched that back when I was like 18 years old. So, you know, you're young then, you're going to watch stuff. Uh, me and Gary did. We weren't, we weren't married very long. <coughs> there goes my voice. When we went to the theater and we watched The Exorcist. That's my phone. Uh, it, 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 yeah, it, I, I said no, never, never, never again. No, no, man. I, and I don't like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. See, it's just certain movies I don't like, or it, it's, I don't know. But the rest of them, all these other ones, like the movie Saw, I just watched that last night. That is so stupid. It's not scary, it's stupid. And it doesn't make any sense, really. I didn't, I didn't get no sense out of it. And there's so many more that I don't like clowns, so I don't get into, you know, Pennywise and all that stuff. I, and that's a child killer, and you know, I, I guess that's the way I, I don't know. So anyway, I don't do that. But this is supposed to be a story I'm gonna read y'all. Okay, this one here is. Uh, 
like I say, it's been told, told and retold and things like that. But I hope y'all, you know, like this kind of video. I mean, it's totally something different. I've not seen this before. So uh, this is just for Halloween and for, you know, people who like um, this type of thing. I just thought it'd be something fun. Okay, it's, uh, this is Bloody Bones as retold by Waylon Jordan. Uh, okay, here we go. A long time ago, when the world was a little less modern and the forests were a lot more plentiful, old Annie lived just outside of town here in a cabin. Old folks said a lot of things about Annie, but mostly they agreed she was a witch. Her house was full of bottles with all manner of strange liquids in them and herbs hung from the ceiling to dry. They said old Annie could conjure a potion to fix whatever ailed you and many a father was seen marching out of Annie's when his wife or kids fell ill. Old Annie had a sour disposition and wasn't much for socializing, but she never turned away anyone in need. She just did her best to fix them up and get them out of her house real quick-like. Now, old Annie made her way into town once a week to get supplies with her old friend she'd ever had with her only friend. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a real fast reader, and if I have to read slow, I tend to do this, so I'll try not to, because I don't want to mess up the story. Okay. Now old Annie made her way into town once a week to get supplies with her only friend she'd ever had in tow. His name was Rawhead, and he was a wild boar the old woman had raised since he was a suckling pig. It was something to see, I tell you. Old Annie in that same black dress and her white hair pulled back in a bun walking side by side with that big old hog. The town almost thought of the two as mascots and even though old Annie only sneered when some brave soul called out a hello. The townspeople would still grin as she passed by. She'd get her supplies and march right back out of town just the way she came in. One day, a group of hunters from the town overwent out, went out hogging in old Annie's woods and killed old Rawhead with a couple of other hogs they found. Old Annie looked for Rawhead for two days before she headed into town to the general store all on her own. Where's Rawhead, Annie? The general store owner asked. I'd like to know that myself, Willin. I ain't seen him in days now. And I'm getting right worried. Well, we haven't seen him here in town, but we'll be sure to keep an eye out. I'll pass the world around, word around. Thank you, Willen. Willen smiled a nervous smile. It was the closest he'd ever heard old Annie to being civil, and that just proved how upset she really was. When almost two weeks had gone by without a word from anyone, old Annie closed all the shutters on her old cabin and lit the fire in the fireplace nice and hot. She put a big pot of water over the fire and began to add herbs from the bundles hanging from the ceiling. She was chanting something fierce as each new herb went into the pot. 
and before long the potion started to bubble around the edges. In the center of the bubbling, O Annie saw a picture of the hunters killing Rawhead. We have sound effects over here. Romeo's snoring. <laughs> the potion fogged over and it cleared. And when it cleared, she saw Rawhead tied up by his hind legs alongside two other hogs being prepared for butchering. The potion fogged again, and when it cleared the last time, she saw all that was left of her old rawhead, her only friend. He was a pile of bloody bones on the ground. A single tear ran down old Annie's face before her eyes hardened. This was murder so far as Annie was concerned, and though the old woman only practiced the white magic, that didn't mean she didn't know the black. The townsfolk heard a lot of strange, unearthly noises coming from the woods that night, and they say a storm of lightning blew in like they'd never seen before. If they'd been able to see inside her cabinet, cabin, they would have heard her chanting, Raw head and bloody bones, raw head and bloody bones, over and over, to beat the band. Her voice got stronger the more she chanted until a great bolt of lightning flew right out of the top of her cabin. The bolt of lightning arched as it hit the sky and came right down on the pile of bones that had once been her friend. Those old bones started rumbling and shaking, and before anyone could say what was happening, they had started to put themselves back together. When they was fully re reassembled, Oh, Annie's voice rumbled out of the sky. Find the men that took you down, bloody bones. Avenge yourself and me. Those bones started walking just like they belonged to a live boar, and bloody bones started sniffing out those hunters. It wasn't long before he found the, the first one. The hunter about died of fright when bloody bones walked up to his front porch with eyes that glowed like hot coals. Lord have mercy, he whispered. Why is your eyes glowing like that? To see your grave, a low, low voice grumbled in response. The hunter let out a nervous laugh and took a step back as Bloody Bones took a few steps forward. He looked down to see that the boar's feet had changed to look like claws. Oh, yeah, well, why you got them big claws to dig your grave? The same low voice answered back, and Bloody Bones nosed forward a bit more. Lord have mercy, what you got that tail for? To sweep your grave when I'm, done, when I'm done, the voice answered a third time and jumped right up on the hunter. They say you could hear him screaming for miles around. Those screams rang out two more times that night as the second and third hunter fell to old Annie and Bloody Bones revenge. The townspeople found O Annie dead in her cabin a week or two later when she had, hadn't come in for supplies in a while. It took all her power and her life to raise bloody bones that night. They gave her a nice little burial in the town cemetery. 
though some folks mumbled she was a no good Christian to want such a thing. To this day, however, they say, those ghostly bones wander this area searching out people who've done wrong and sometimes oh Annie is walking with him. That is the story of Raw Head and Bloody Bones, which I heard it is Red Eyes and Bloody Bones. It sounds familiar, but some of it sounds a little different. But this is from iHorror.com. So if any of y'all want to look it up, I just typed in, uh, what was it? The story of red eyes and bloody bones, and it came up with some different things like the right. So this one right here, that was the only one I could find similar to what I remember the story was like. So I hope y'all enjoyed this. I mean, <laughs> uh, right here it says, "Whenever I hear the story, as whenever I heard this story as a kid, it always came." with a warning to make sure we knew to be in by dark or bloody bones might get us. It's just that kind of story. <laughs> so they do different stories. Um, horror stories, you know, if you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, I just wanted to... <laughs> Just kind of reminisce back, you know, whenever I was a kid, and and that's the story that my sister used to scare the crap out of me with. <laughs> so anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed it. It <laughs> took 22 minutes for me to, I had to do a little talking at the beginning, you know. So anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed a good uh, Halloween scary story. And uh, if you did, give the video a thumbs up or, you know, if you didn't like it, give it a, a thumbs down. I don't really mind whichever, you know. I just wanted to do something different. So thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe and share. Share the story of Raw Head and Bloody Bones. See ya. Boom.